In that same year, 1979, a group of college students get a crazy idea. What if they, we broke into, this is what they're saying, this is their dialogue, the US Embassy, and we could get a hold of the CIA documents that show that the US overthrew the, democ the democracy in 53. Then we could show the world and maybe the United States would apologize for it. And then we could start healing from this wound. And so a group of college students start heading to the US Embassy. Well, most of the US Embassy staff had already been evacuated. There were like four civilians left at that point, and they get word that the students are coming and they escape to the Canadian Embassy. But there's 66 CIA operatives still there because Iran wasn't just the headquarters for the Iranian, the CIA operation, operations in Iran. Iran was the headquarters for CIA operations in Asia. So basically everything from Turkey to China operated out of Tehran to the point where we had the minting plates for $20 bills there. So San Francisco, Denver, Philadelphia, and Tehran. That's where we minted US money. Those are the official mints. Isn't that cool? Because the CIA needed the cash, right? When it's overthrowing democracies, that's not cheap. You gotta, you gotta pay for that stuff. $20 bills are a fantastic way to pay for everything, it turns out. And so that's what they did. That's, when we were doing the Sunni awakening in Iraq, we literally had boxes of $20 bills and we just drive around with forklifts delivering these crates of $20 bills. I don't know what it is about $20 bills, but that's the thing. I think it's easier to buy AK-47s with them for some reason. Uh, not sure. So, <clears throat> The, 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 the brand new Islamic Republic that doesn't want anything to do with what the students are about to do calls the U.S. Embassy because the U.S. Embassy is officially United States of America. So as soon as those kids climb over the wall, they're in the United States of America trespassing. This is an international incident. And so they call the embassy. They're like, dude, get the rest of your staff out. What are you doing there? And the CIA guys are like, nothing, as they're shredding the documents. That, they got to stay there. They got to get everything shredded. And so they're just sitting there at the shredders going, we're, we're just going to stay here a little longer. The Iranian government's like, no, you got to go. What are you doing? They're obeying orders. The students climb over the wall and they capture the 66 CIA operatives in the act of shredding the documents. They had already gotten a bunch of the documents shredded. Those college students shove those shredded documents in garbage bags. They walk over to the nearby middle schools and high schools. They go, you guys like making puzzles, right? And they put the documents back together. In our words, piece by piece, we document how Kermit Roosevelt overthrew the democracy in 1953. The students go, here it is. They cop make copies. Give it for free to the whole world. Too bad there wasn't an internet back then. They'd have loved that. They give it away to the whole world, free documents. And, it, and then they go, okay, President Carter, go ahead, apologize. No way. We're the United States of America. Even though we've lost wars, we'll never admit it. And we're definitely never going to apologize. And so we refused. Carter wasn't going to do it. So the students said, we won't release the hostages until you do. Carter's like, I don't care. Don't keep them there, just CIA operatives, no one cares. And then the students go, but you know what else we have? We have the names of all your operatives in China and in Southeast Asia and in India and in Pakistan. And you sure you don't want to apologize? And Carter didn't do it. And so they published all of it. In an instant, the CIA is massacred. Not literally, they just had to pull all their operatives out of the field because now the Chinese knew their name and where they were. Now, now everybody knew their names and where they were. And so the CIA had to start over, just, just like we had to do in Russia, right? October 2021, 
the CIA admitted that uh, their assets in Russia were wiped out. Oh, it's amazing. I wonder where those documents came from that detailed out the location and names of all those assets. Hmm, let me think. Hmm, where could those documents have come from? Anyway, wonder. So, uh, that, there's no denying what we did, but we're not going to apologize for it, and we're not going to get the hostages released. And so, time's passing. Ted Koppel creates a new TV show, Nightline. It's going to be at night. <laughs> He's going to have like fun music to start the show, and then every, every show is going to start with how many days the innocent victim hostages have been held in captivity in Iran. And it became like this clock measuring time. And Carter's popularity rating just kept going down, down, down. So Carter, in desperation, decides to do a military operation. He's going to send helicopters in to do a rescue. And the helicopters are flying across Iran, and then they got to do mid-air refueling. That sounds like an awful idea. I know we are good at doing it now. But it, it turned out it was an awful idea. Two of the helicopters collide. They go down, and, and there's not enough helicopters now to complete the mission, so they have to abort and come back. And so now the Iranians are like dancing on these burnt out helicopters. And it, Carter's popularity <laughs> plunges even faster now. And then came rumors of the October surprise. And at this point, the, the hostages are like in hell for a year. And there was talk that Carter had done it. He had successfully negotiated the release of the hostages. And now, they were going to get released October 1980. November 1980 is the Reagan-Carter election. And so, um, <coughs> Reagan is panicking because if the hostages get released before the election, Carter's popularity will bounce right back and he'll probably win the election. So they've got to stop this from happening. So they figure out who Carter's been negotiating with. His name is Rafsanjani. In the early days, he had, so, he had his hands in so many different things that uh, I nicknamed him the prince, as in Machiavelli's the prince. Uh, he was prime minister at one point. He was never president. There is no prime minister of Iran. They dissolved that position. So, uh, but he, he did get into a powerful position. He never got to the, the top, but he was, didn't matter. He was very powerful. And so the Reagan campaign, now so for the record, this is not 100% proven. It's just mostly proven. There's like 15 witnesses and multiple court documents because a lot of this, a lot of the material that, that is evidence for this actually ended up in courtrooms. And judges actually even said, yes, some of this definitely did happen. And by the time you're done with the evidence, it's probably true. I, I've, I'm confident this is true. What happened was the Reagan campaign sent a group of men. They met with Rafsanjani. They came with briefcases. They put the briefcases on a desk. And they said, we'd like for you to hold the hostages at least until after the election. Rafsanjani went, I thought you said you were from the United States. They go, we are. And Rafsanjani goes, what's in the suitcases? And they go, you'll like it. It wasn't $20 bills. It was more. And so he opens it up and he goes, you know what, I'm going to see what I can do. He had successfully negotiated with the students to release the hostages. He goes back and he renegotiates with them to keep the hostages. The election happened. Reagan wins. Carter doesn't know this has happened. So he still got his sleeves rolled up, negotiating, trying to get the hostages released. He's negotiating while Reagan's being inaugurated. Like he was so determined to make it happen. And of course, m moments after Reagan is inaugurated president, they, they released the hostages 